Namaste. In this lecture, we are look, we are going to synthesize and summarize what we did in the previous lectures of this week, and also look at some numerical examples. So let us begin with why do we need a tree form? So as we saw in the previous lectures, and as we can see in this slide, a tree form is needed for a number of different purposes. We require it for the management of biomass or carbon fixation, if we wanted to maximize the biomass. If you wanted to manage a tree stand for maximum income, then too we require information about the tree forms because we will need trees of merchantable heights which we, we shall be able to predict using the taper equations. We can also be managing a, a tree stand or a forest stand for the maximum net return on investment. Now there is a, a difference between maximum income and maximum net return on investment. Now, to uh, understand the difference between maximum income and maximum net return on investment, consider two policies given by banks. So, in the first policy, if you say, uh, so you have got two plans, plan A and plan B. In the first policy, if you invest say a sum of 100,000 rupees, you will be getting every month an income of 11,000 rupees, whereas in this plan B, you will be getting an income of 10,000 rupees every month. However, the plan A also stipulates that you will be getting this income for say 2 years. But in the case of plan B and at the end of 2 years, all of your principal sum has extinguished. In the case of plan B, say you will be getting it for 10 years and at the end of 10 years, your net investment has vanished. Now, if we looked at maximum income, so income would tell us that at every time t, say every month, we are in the case of plan A, we are getting an income of 11,000 rupees, whereas in the case of plan B, we are getting only 10,000 rupees. So, if we wanted to maximize our uh, income, we would be choosing plan A, whereas if we looked at maximum net return on investment, so in the case of plan A, you are getting a total return of 11,000 multiplied by 2 years multiplied by 12 months. In this case, you are getting 10,000 multiplied by 10 years multiplied by 12 months. So, obviously, the net uh, return that you are getting out of plan B is much greater than that of plan A. Maybe uh, to do that, in the case of plan B, you are getting it over a longer time span. In the case of plan A, you are getting it on a shorter time span. Now, we can also be, uh, be managing uh, our forest stand as we can see in this slide for technical management. Now, what do we mean by technical management? A technical management means that a crop should yield the maximum material of a specific size or suitability for economic conversion or for special use. So, to give an example, in the case of technical management, you might be having a forest stand that has to be managed for the needs of, uh, of timber merchants or maybe for the needs of shipbuilders. So, in the case of a forest stand that is being managed for timber merchants, you might be, be requiring smaller size of trees, but in the case of a, a forest stand that is being managed for shipbuilders, you might be having a requirement of larger sized trees. So, that is called as a technical management. We can also be managing a forest stand for the maximization of biodiversity. So, that is what we are doing in the case of our protected areas, say national parks or wildlife sanctuaries. So, in the case of national parks, you are not allowed to harvest any tree, but at the same time, we leave those trees out there in the national parks to be used by a number of organisms. So, for instance, when a tree is living, it might be a, a host for a number of insects 
may be when uh, uh, when any particular tree has died it becomes home for termites so those are also part of biodiversity so we might be managing a, a forest stand for maximization of biodiversity but there too we need to to understand how much of biomass is available for each uh, species of biodiversity so there too it is essential to know how much biomass is there or how much volume is there in your forest stand of different ages so that was a, a brief of tree forms now there are some uh, things as we can see in the slide called perfect tree form now a perfect tree form in the case of uh, merchantable trees it would mean that you have a straight bowl so we would prefer those trees that are cylindrical in shape or even if your shape is not completely cylindrical it should have a very less amount of taper so this is a straight bowl at the same time we do not want any branches because if there are branches here when you uh, when you process this timber when you cut it like this you might find some physiological defects at the these points where you had branches before so you should either not have any branches or you should have very thin branches at the same time there should not be any apparent defect now there are a number of defects in the case of timber so for instance in the place of having a straight timber you might be having a crooked timber so that is a defect or you might be having a timber that has a hole in between that is also a defect so in the case of a perfect tree you should not be having any apparent defects at the same time you should not be having any forking now in the case of a forking what happens is in place of having a this is straight bowl your tree might appear something like this so in this case this timber which is one of the thickest timbers that can be extracted from this tree this has a very small length of this small l so if you have a tree that has a, a, a very prominent forking it is not considered a perfect tree form at the same time any branches any thin branches that you have should also be having wide branching angles no so as we can see see in the slide so the slide this bottom panel it shows you the branching angles of a number of branches so the first one is 90 degrees in which your branches are perpendicular to that of the bowl in the second case you have 70 degrees branches so that is less than 90 degrees but it is very far apart from the tree so in that case when we have these uh, defects they will not be very prominent but if you had a branch that went at a very acute angle then this portion would be having a very large amount of defect so that is not considered a perfect tree form next we have an acceptable tree form an acceptable tree form is not perfect it has some kinks or deformities it might even be having some insect or pest attack but it is acceptable so we can use it for some purposes but then we have unacceptable tree forms an unacceptable tree form could mean a tree that is highly crooked highly crooked means that this tree in place of moving like this it might be going like in a serpentine manner for instance so this is a crooked tree or it might be having a huge amount of forking or a severe rot or a large butt so that would be considered an unacceptable tree form so now let us now look at some numerical problems so this is an example problem a tree has a height of 11 meters its diameter at different heights is given and we need to calculate the volume of the tree now this is an example situation but this tells us the standard way in which a tree is cut for measurement purposes so let us now solve try to solve this problem the total height of the tree h is equal to 11 meters and its diameter at different heights is given the diameter at breast height or the diameter at 1.37 meters is given as 31 cm the diameter at 4.24 meters is given as 23 cm 
the diameter at 7.24 meters is given as 14 centimeters the diameter at 8.74 meters is given as 9 centimeters and we need to calculate the volume now the first thing that we need to understand is why do we have these particular heights now this 1.37 is the standard height it's the the breast height so we can understand this but then why should we measure a tree at these heights is the question so to understand that let us make a tree so as we know the topmost portion is going to be conical and in any case we are going to measure the dbh so these are two things that we know about a tree what about these lengths so if we can see 7.24 minus 4.24 it gives you 3 meters similarly your 8.74 minus 7.24 it would give you 1.5 meters so now let us try to understand why we measured this tree at these heights so now let us divide our tree into four sections so here we have our dbh let us take another section that has a height that is twice that of dbh so you had the first height as 1.37 meters the second would be 2.74 meters so this is 2.74 meters so now if we considered this section let us call it section a so if we considered this section it has a length of 2.74 meters and its center point is the breast height that is 1.37 meters at the center location we know the diameter we know the height of this log so can we now find out the volume of this section so volume of section a so considering it to be a uniform section we can use this uh, central diameter so let us consider this to be nearly a cylinder because this is a, a very small height so we do not expect quite a lot of tapering so now let us try to calculate the volume the volume would be pi by 4 d square h which in this case would be pi by 4 here d in the central location is dbh which is 31 centimeters so 0 0.31 meters square into height is 2.74 meters so this would be the volume of section a now in the case of section b it would have a length of 3 meters so this is section b let us use another color for it section b has a total length of 3 meters so what is the height at this point so here you will have the height is equal to 2.74 plus 3 is equal to 5.74 meters now what is the central portion now because this is 3 meters here you have 1.5 meters and here also you have 1.5 meters so what is the height here the height is uh, 2.74 plus 1.5 is equal to 4.24 meters which is the second height that we are given so we know the diameter at this point so which is d 4.24 meters we know the central diameter we know the length of the log so we can now calculate the volume of section b as pi by 4 here your d would be 0 0.23 meters square into height which is 3 meters now let us consider another section now this section called section c so this section would again be having a height of uh, or a length of 3 meters so what is the height at this point 
this point would be this height 5.74 plus 3 is equal to 8.74 meters. Consider the midpoint, the mi at the midpoint your height is this height which is 5.74 plus 1.5 because this is 1.5 and this again is 1.5. So this is 7.24 meters which is this height. Now wanted to calculate the volume of section C it would be uh, pi by 4 into d square d here is 0 0.14 square into 3. So we can calculate this height. Now at this particular point we have a height of 8.74 and this height is given here. So let us now use another color for it this height is given here as 8.74. So, and uh, we have also measured the diameter at this point. So, diameter at 8.74 meters is equal to 9 centimeters. Why have we, we, we have already measured the diameter at this point. Why do we need to measure the diameter at this point? This is because we can now consider this top portion to be the cone. So, in the case of this cone, we have the bottom diameter which is given as this. Now, the next thing that we need to figure out is the height of the cone. Now, we are given that the total height of the tree is 11 meters. The height of the base of this cone is 8.74 meters. So, can we now figure out the height of the cone? The height of the cone would be 2.26 meters. So, if we know the height of this cone, can we figure out its volume? The volume would be 1 by 3 pi r square h or pi by 4 d square. d here is 0 0.09 meters square into 2.26 in cubic meters. To sum up, We have divided our tree into four sections. So, as in this figure, your section A is a cylinder with center diameter is equal to dBh and height is equal to 2 into breast height. Your section B, section B is also a cylinder with with length is equal to three meters and center dia given. Next, as in the previous figure, we have our third section. section C which is again a cylinder with length is equal to 3 meters and the center dia given. Our fourth section D is a cone with base dia given and height that can be calculated from total height of the tree capital H. Now, one question that arises is why do we use this length 3 meters? What is the significance of using 3 meters? Well, it turns out that most of the logs that are harvested from the tree for merchantable purposes have the length of 3 meters. So, when we are measuring a tree, when we are trying to calculate its volume, if we uh, if we uh, chopped its logs in such a fashion that their length were 3 meters, then we would be able to use them as well. We would be able to sell them and we would be able to use them as well. So, this is the, the significance of 3 meters. Now, if you are given any such problem, 
the first section would always be having a height of twice of breast height you could be having n number of sections with a height of 3 meters so in this case we had only two se uh, sections but we could be having n number of sections the topmost section would always be a cone whose uh, base diameter would be given and whose height would be given because we are cutting the tree at these points so in the case of this section say in the case of section b what you would be doing is you would be making a cut here and a cut here so you have two cuts so to use the same colors this is your section b so you have made a cut here and you have made a cut here so once you have made these cuts and once you have this log at hand you can always measure the central diameter so the central diameter would be what was given to you in the problem so this is how we are going to make the cuts so if we did all the calculations we would find that the uh, volume of tree is equal to volume of section a plus volume of section b plus volume of section c plus volume of section d so the first case is a cylinder so you used pi r square h so r1 h1 plus pi r square h plus pi r3 square h3 plus the fourth section is a cone so it's pi r4 square h4 now in our example case we have already calculated these volumes in terms of these formulae so if we uh, computed these we would find that it is 0 0.207 plus 0 0.125 plus 0 0.046 plus 0 0.005 so the total volume is 0 0.383 cubic meter so this example tells you how we make cuts out there in the forest for measurement purposes and also how we calculate the volumes once we have made those cuts so let us now look at another example now this example as you can see on your screen is find the artificial form factor of a tree based on the following data so you are asked to find out the artificial form factor now what is the artificial form factor as we saw in the previous slides an artificial form factor is the breast height form factor in which you take the volume of the tree you take a cylinder whose diameter is the same as your diameter at breast height and the height equal to the height of the tree you divide the volume of the tree by the volume of the cylinder and the value that you get is the artificial form factor now looking at, at the question you have dbh is equal to 49 centimeters height of the tree or let us represent it by capital H is equal to 29 meters and the volume of the tree so now you know how to calculate the volume as in the previous example so here you have the volume of 3.26 cubic meters and you are asked to find out the artificial form factor so how do we get the artificial form factor we consider this tree we consider the breast height so you know the diameter at breast height or the dbh so at this point we draw a cylinder with diameter is equal to dbh and height is equal to uh, the height of the tree and we divide the volume of so the artificial form factor would be the volume of tree divided by the volume of the cylinder now volume of tree is given to you 3.26 cubic meters how do you find out the volume of the cylinder it is the volume of cylinder is pi by 4 d square h so here it is pi by 4 into d is 0. Uh, 0.49 meters into 29 
is equal to 5.47 cubic meters. So, we put this value here. So, it is 3.26 divided by 5.47 cubic meters this get cancelled out is equal to 0 0.60. So, the artificial form factor f is equal to 0 0.60. Again, now how are we going to use these values? If we knew the form factors for a representative group of trees and we can very easily measure the the dbh and the height of a tree we could use this form factor uh, to calculate the volume of the tree thank you so much for your attention jai hind